Hi, I'm Mitch Gallagher. Welcome to Sweetwater's Guitars and Gear. This time out, first look at an incredible new processor from Line 6. Let's get started. <laughs> What you just heard there was Sweetwater's Don Carr jamming through the brand new Helix from Line 6. Now the Helix is an incredible new guitar multi-effects processor. It does all sorts of modeling for amps, cabinets, effects, but it also is designed to serve as a nerve center for both a stage rig as well as for a recording studio rig. The Helix brings together not only modeling functions, but also control functions. So you can control your amplifier using outputs from the back panel. You can also insert external effects. You can interface with MIDI, we've got digital I.O., we've even got USB connections that allow this to serve as an 8 input and 8 output audio interface for your Mac, your PC, or even your iPad. Line 6 spent years and put an incredible amount of effort into designing new models that are incredibly realistic. So we've got HX amplifier models that use proprietary technology to analyze even at a subcomponent level. The Helix also features HX hybrid cabs, which use impulse response technology, which means actual recordings of real cabs to process the amplifier output to give you extremely realistic simulations of authentic amplifiers and speaker combinations. You can assign any of 16 microphones to each speaker cabinet, and you can even set the distance how far away the microphone is from the speaker. Line 6 designed new proprietary processes for analyzing effects, so we have HX effects inside the Helix as well. Again, incredibly realistic recreations of authentic vintage and modern effects processors. We've got 12 capacitive foot switches on the front panel. Now these can be used for selecting presets, also for turning effects on and off. And because they're capacitive, they're touch sensitive. So if we touch one of the switches, we change what's happening on the screen. We also have an onboard expression pedal, and you can connect two additional expression pedals to the back panel. Master volume control, headphone volume control. But the nerve center for the Helix is this large, color, high-resolution display right here in the center. This is where you do all your editing, set up your blocks for the different modeling processes, anything that you do as far as interfacing with the Helix takes place right here on this screen. Now we have six control knobs underneath for adjusting parameters, and just a few buttons for actually taking us through things. There's not a lot of menu diving that has to go on with the Helix. It's very fast, very easy, and very intuitive for setting up presets. As far as interfacing with the Helix, it's very simple. We have just a few buttons that take us pretty much everywhere we need to go. There's a dedicated save button for saving presets. We have a menu button, and that opens menus that array across the bottom of the display. To select a menu, just press the button, and then you can turn the knobs to adjust the various different parameters. A home button takes us back to the home screen, and that's where you'll be at when you're playing through the Helix, when you have it on stage or in the studio. A nice thing here is that we have a dedicated amplifier button. When you hit that switch, it gives you the parameters for the amplifier, so you can make quick adjustments as you need to. Over on this side is where we control the different models. Now the Helix is set up to where you have different blocks that are arrayed across each signal path. So for example, we've got a compressor here in the first block, the second block is a slapback delay, third block is a Fender Deluxe amplifier head, the fourth block is a 1x12 Deluxe amplifier cabinet, and then finally we've got a 63 Fender reverb. So each of those blocks contains a modeling processor. Using the joystick in the center, we can navigate among the blocks. When you push that, you open up the selection for the models that can be loaded into a block, and any model can be loaded into any block. You can navigate through the different models using the joystick. So you can scroll up, scroll down, move over to different categories. So we can look at the bass category, go back to our guitar category, scroll down, and get back to where we were. So it's very easy to navigate. We also have an action button, and that allows us to work with the different blocks. So when we press that, we can copy a block, we can paste a block, clear a block out, or we can clear all the blocks and start from scratch. Now it's also very easy to move the blocks around. Simply use the joystick, and you can swap the position very simply. You can see that I've got the amplifier selected here. Here it's after the delay, and here we've got the amplifier before the delay. So very, very easy to set up your signal path and edit all the parameters. The final two buttons are page up and page down buttons, which give us access to additional parameters where they're available on a particular block. That's really all there is to it. The Helix is incredibly intuitive to operate. It's so easy to set up presets. In fact, I never cracked the manual. All I had was the cheat sheet that comes with it, which tells you what each control does and what each input and output does, and that's all I needed to begin setting up presets. Let's take a quick tour of the connections that are available on the back panel, and then we'll get to some of the different sounds that are available inside the Helix. Beginning on the left-hand side of the back panel, we have two expression pedal inputs. So you can have a total of three pedals, including the one that's mounted on the front panel. Next to that, we have an external amp connection, and that gives us two different signals for controlling reverb and channel switching inside an external amplifier. There's a control voltage output, and that can serve as an expression pedal output to an additional piece of gear, or as an actual control voltage output for controlling a synthesizer module. 
We have a guitar input and an additional aux input. Now the both of those will accept guitar level signals from an electric guitar or an electric bass and you can select which one is active per preset. Next up we have an XLR input that accepts microphone level signals. Now you can plug a microphone in here and process your vocals using the effects inside the Helix or you can even use the Helix as an audio interface to record that microphone signal into your computer. To the right of the microphone input, we have four sets of quarter inch sends and returns. Now these serve as basically loops for connecting external pedals. So if you have a favorite overdrive that you want to continue using while using the other effects that are inside the Helix, connect it to one of the loops and you can bring it in and out using either a foot switch or store the status of that loop, whether it's in or out, inside each of the presets. Next we have stereo XLR outputs and stereo quarter inch outputs and both those are active at the same time. In fact what we're doing here right now is I have the XLR outputs feeding my studio monitors while the quarter inch outputs are going straight into our cameras for the video. We have a stereo headphone output and there's a control knob for setting its volume right on the front panel. If you're using a Line 6 Variax guitar, there's a jack so you can connect it directly into the Helix and take advantage of all that interaction there as well. The Helix has dedicated MIDI input and output jacks and those can be used to send both program changes and control changes to external MIDI capable gear. The Helix has stereo speed if input and output jacks on RCA connections. Next we have an AES EBU format digital output for feeding external digital gear and that XLR output can also double as an L6 link jack and that can be used for hooking up external Line 6 equipment. Finally, we have a USB port for connecting the Helix to a Mac or a PC computer, and you can also use that with a camera connection kit to hook the Helix up to an iPad. Now let's check out some of the sounds in the Helix. We brought Don Carr back, and he's going to do some playing for us. We'll begin by looking at a couple of presets we've created. This first one I put together in just a couple of minutes. It basically features a Plexi amplifier, 4x12 with greenbacks. We've got a little bit of delay, a little bit of hall reverb. Go ahead and play a little bit for us, Don. <laughs> So the sounds are very authentic. That sounds like a Plexi that you're driving pretty hard. But the great thing is how responsive it is. Don, dial your volume back to about five or six on the knob. Let's hear what that sounds like. Then we'll bring up the volume knob. You can hear how it really changes. Now most modelers have a lot of trouble with this, but it sounds very authentic when you're doing it with the Helix. <laughs> It really responds the way a true amplifier would respond. The other thing we can do is within a preset, we can have different pedals arrayed across the different buttons and bring them in and out by stepping on those buttons. So to give you an example, I've got a Minotaur, which is basically an overdrive, on this second row of buttons here. When we step on the switch, that'll become active. So give us our dry tone, or our tone with just the modeled amplifier, the reverb, and the delay. Okay, now when it's time for a lead, we step on the Minotaur. And back to our rhythm part. This really increases the flexibility of the Helix. You're not locked into just what's active in a preset. You can bring different effects in and out. And in fact, these switches can be momentary, so you could just step on a switch and the effect's only active while you hold the switch down. When you let the switch back up, the effect goes back off. So this really gives us a lot of versatility for tailoring our tone in a live performance situation. Now let's check out a clean sound. Now I've found sometimes in the past that some modelers have really struggled to create an authentic sounding clean sound. Sometimes they sound too sterile, and when they do get to the edge of breakup, they just don't sound real. I found with the Helix, it really sounds authentic. So what I've got set up here as far as a signal path is a Fender Deluxe head, a 1x12 Deluxe cabinet, and then a 63 Fender Spring Reverb. We've also got a couple of stomp boxes set up at the beginning of the signal path. Now when I stored the preset, both those stomp boxes were bypassed, so we're going to come up just going straight into the amplifier. But then using these two foot switches, we can bring in a compressor as well as a tape delay. And we'll look at how that works as we're going along here. But Don, play for us and we'll just hear the amplifier through the Spring Reverb. Great. So you can hear that sound is basically clean, but we're getting a little bit of hair on top, just a little bit of breakup going on there when you pluck a little bit harder. Now we can turn on a compressor by simply stepping on the foot switch that I've assigned to it, and that's very simple. Just choose the foot switch menu and dial it up. It takes two seconds to assign that. And I've got a deluxe compressor here, which gives us control over the attack, the release, the ratio, the mix. So we've got a lot of control over what's happening. So Don, let's hear what it sounds like, just our dry sound. Then we can bring in our compressor by just stepping on the switch.
nice. It's giving you that poppy sound that you want to have for those kind of chicken picking type licks, or even when you're playing clean. And there are a number of different compressors here, including a studio compressor, which you normally obviously wouldn't have on your pedal board as a guitar player. Now we can also turn on the tape delay, and I've got that set for a slapback setting. That's a nice clean tone that really has a lot of snap to it. Great for that type of playing. And it shows you how easy it is to bring those effects in and out by just stepping on a switch and how you're not just locked into a preset. So you really can set this up for performance on stage and in the studio and do it all in one pass without having to call up multiple presets. There are an incredible number of models that you can access for filling the blocks inside the Helix and for creating your tones. Everything from vintage effects, vintage amplifiers, modern amplifiers, different cabinets, different microphones. You have so much control over all those different aspects. We can access all those models by just pushing down the joystick. That opens up our model menu and we can scroll over here. We've got different types of distortions, lots of different things available there. Dynamics processors, so those are our compressors. Again, we have our deluxe comp that we were hearing inside that clean preset. We've also got a studio comp. We've got a noise gate, number of different EQs, lots and lots of different modulation effects, everything from tremolos to phase shifters to flangers to vibes, lots and lots of different effects available there. Different delays in mono and in stereo. We've got reverbs. We've got pitch synthesizer effects. We've got filters. You can assign a wah pedal to the expression pedal on the front panel, or you can use one of the external expression pedal inputs to control that wah. Now we have our amp and cabinets, and those can be in combination as we were using in the first preset. So we've got lots of different things here, all kinds of different uh, presets available. Everything from tweed amps to deluxes to jazz choruses to British amps to AC30s to Marshalls. We can also look at individual amp heads, which is what we have loaded here. So all kinds of different things available there. We've got different cabinets, preamps, impulse responses as far as those cabinets go, volume, pan control, and this is where you access the external send and return for using your external stomp boxes inside the uh, Helix. And we also have a built-in looper. So if you want to do looping type effects, you want to play down parts, that you, whether you're playing solo or with the band, you can access that here. So you have tons and tons of things available. Now let's jump out and look at how easy it is to edit a preset. Now accessing the parameters for a model inside a block is very simple. Just scroll over using the joystick. Here, for example, are our compressor parameters. But what I actually want to show you are the speaker parameters, because this is really interesting and allows you to get very creative. So using the knobs at the bottom of the screen, we can control the type of microphone. So we can go from an SM57. Don, go ahead and play for us. To a 409 Sennheiser. We can go to a Royer Ribbon microphone. Different types of condensers. So you can really do a lot of tailoring of the sound just using that microphone selection. And then beyond that, we can set the distance of the microphone from the speaker. So we're at one inch away. Go ahead. And now we're a foot away. So you have a control over that depth that's in the sound based on how far the microphone is from the physical speaker. We've got low cut, high cut controls, and the early reflections control is very interesting as well. Let's bypass our reverb. Uh, hit the bypass button here. Go back to our speaker and Don play for us. The early reflections determines how much of the room sound is being picked up by the microphone. So we can go from zero to all the way to 100%, making it sound like you're inside an enclosed space. Now this gives a lot more richness to the sound when you blend it in with a reverb effect. And finally we have our level control for setting the output level for the preset. So this gives you an idea of the depth of editing that's available, but also how easy it is to edit presets, how easy it is to edit those different blocks and set up the sounds that you want. I hope you've enjoyed this first look at the Helix. It really is an incredible guitar multi-effects processor that serves as a nerve center for your rig. You can take this on stage, you can control your amplifiers, you can use your external stomp boxes, set up all your presets for all the songs you need to get through a gig, and then take it into the studio and either connect it by USB straight into your computer or use its output into a mixing console or into a recorder to record your tracks that way. The Helix is super easy to use and it's really well constructed. It's designed to be tour grade, which means it's going to stand up to the rigors of the road. If you're looking for one multi-effects processor and modeler that can serve as the hub for your entire rig, whether you're in the studio, on the road, or in rehearsal, the Helix is a great choice. You definitely want to check this out. Special thanks to Don Carr for coming in and demonstrating the sounds in the Helix for us, and I hope you enjoyed this installment of Sweetwater's Guitars and Gear. Be sure to tune in next time. We'll have more guitars, more amps, more effects, and we'll be making lots of music. I'm Mitch Gallagher.